Now we're going to take a look at partial variation. So with partial variation, our graph is not going to pass through the origin. Instead, it's going to hit the graph along the y-axis somewhere because there's going to be an initial value involved. So in this example, we're going to say that a large pizza costs $6 plus $2 for every topping. So we're going to fill in a number, a, a table of values here. So N is going to be our number of toppings, and that's going to be on our X axis. And then C is our cost in dollars. That will be our Y. That's the dependent variable. The cost is depending on the number of toppings. So if we didn't get any toppings at all, it's going to cost $6. If I get one topping, it's going to be $2 more, so it'll cost eight. If I get two toppings, it'll cost another $2, so 10. Three will cost 12. Four will cost 14. And five will cost $16. So now we'll put that onto our graph. So our dependent variable is cost, so that'll be on the y-axis. So cost in dollars will go there. And then on the x-axis will be our number of toppings. So I'm going to go every two dashes will be one. Like so. And then along the top, I'm just going to make every dash two. Two, four six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and so on. So now we're gonna plot that. So at, with zero toppings, it's gonna to cost $6. With one topping, it's gonna to cost eight. Two toppings is gonna to cost 10. Three toppings is going to cost 12. Four toppings is going to cost 14. And then five toppings is going to cost $16. And now we can draw our line of best fit, like so. OK, so now I'll answer a few questions. So first of all, is this relationship linear or nonlinear? It's linear because all the points line up quite nicely. And it passes through the y-axis at 0, 6. So you can see that right here. It's not passing through the origin. It's passing through at 0, 6. And our next question is to write an equation to find the cost of a large pizza, C, with n toppings. So we're going to say the cost is equal to 2n plus 6. So the plus 6 is our initial value. Um, we use that to figure out what our base cost is. And then we know that if you've got 0, we plug that in. So 2 times 0 would be 0 plus 6. So that would work. We would have $6 for the first pizza. So then our next question is, how much would it cost if you were to get a pizza with 8 toppings? So if we put that in, so 2 times 8 plus 6, it's going to cost $22. So this relationship is an example of partial variation. So in partial variation, if y varies partially with x, the equation is of the form y equals mx, just like before, but now plus b. So b is the y-intercept. It's also sometimes called the initial value. And then m is still the slope, which is also the rate of change. So another way of describing partial variation is it's the graph of a partial variation is a straight line, it's still linear, 
um, but it doesn't pass through the origin or zero zero. Instead, it passes through somewhere along the y-axis. So now we're going to work through an example. So we've been given a partial table of values. So we don't have all the values written in. Um, we're being told that this table of values shows that y is varying partially with x. So that means it's not going through the origin. So if we take a look at x when it's 0, y is equal to 4. When x equals 1, y equals 7. So x went up by 1, y went up by 3. So that means that each time, y is going to go up by 3. So let's fill in our missing values. So when x goes up to 2, it increased by 1, y is going to increase by 3, so 7 plus 3 is 10. And then 13 is going to increase to 3 by 3, so it's going to be 16. Now we're going to graph the relationship. So along the bottom is our independent variable, our x variable. This is our x, this is our y. So I'm going to make every line equal to 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. This one I'm going to go up by 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and so on. So I won't put all the values in, but you get the point. So when x is 0, y is 4. So it's going to be right there. When x is 1, y was 7. So we've got 2, 4, 6, it's going to be about there. When x is equal to 2, y was 10, so that's going to be right there. When x was equal to 3, y was 13. And then finally, when x was 4, y was 16, so right there. So that is our graph, and we'll draw a line to show that it's a uh, linear equation. So now some of the questions that we're asking. What is the initial value of y, or the y-intercept? That is 4. So the y-intercept is 4, so it's 0, 4. What is the constant of variation, which is the rate of change, which is also the slope? The constant of variation is 3, m equals 3. So b equals 4, m is going to equal 3. So write the equation in the form y equals mx plus b. So it's going to be y equals 3x plus 4. That is our equation of this line. So now we're going to go through some examples of EQAO questions that involve direct and partial variation. So in our first example, we have a bus is rented for a class field trip. The transportation cost for the trip is made up of $225 to rent the bus, $50 for gas, and then $2 for each bus seat. So which relation below describes the total transportation cost for the trip if C is the total cost in dollars and N is the number of seats. So one of the best strategies for solving an EQO question or any multiple choice question is to cover up the solutions or don't look at the solutions at all and try to answer it yourself on your own. So first of all, there are two things that are adding up to the initial value. So we have the $225 to rent the bus and then $50 for gas so that adds up to $275 initial value. And then it's $2 for each bus seat. So our answer is going to be C equals 2N plus 275. So let's look and see if that is an option. So it is, if we look down at the last option, C equals 2N plus 275, so it's D. But let's just take a bit of time and, and talk about why the other ones are wrong. So we can actually get rid of these two altogether. 
A and C because the initial value, the B, was 225. So that was wrong. So it had to be B or D. But then if you take a look, we have a negative number here. So it's not going down for every person that rides the bus. The price is going to go up. So it wouldn't be negative. So we can get rid of that. So it does leave us to the choice that we did select because we have C equals 2N plus 275. In our next example, we have a computer is expected to decrease in value over time. The relationship between the value V of the computer in dollars after T years is written as the following. So V equals negative 300 T plus 2100. So a line representing the relationship is graphed. So we have it going downwards. So that makes sense. We have a negative slope, so it's going down and to the right over time. So it says, what does the v-intercept of the line represent? So if we take a look here, the v-intercept would be the initial value, what you start off with. So it's not the first one, it's not the decrease in value per year, so that's wrong. The initial value of the computer that is the right answer, so it's that one. It's not the number of years until the value is zero, that's wrong. The V intercept is over here, so that's when time is zero. And then the number of years the computer would work, this graph is nothing about that at all. So it has to be G. Okay, in our next one we have a table of values representing a linear relationship. And the question is, which equation represents this relation? So let's take a look here. So we have at time zero, distance is five. Okay, and then at time one, it's 15. At distance two, it's 25 and so on. So if we take a look at how much each time it's going up. When this goes up by one, this is going up by 10. And then this is going up by 10 and so on. So our first difference is 10. So the question is, which equation represents this relation? So it is going to be D, and our slope is 10. It's going up by 10 for every 1. So it's going to be 10T. And then we need to figure out, okay, so is there an initial value? There is an initial value. It is D. So the correct answer is 10t plus 5. So the answer is C. It's not direct variation, so we can get rid of these two because there is that initial value of 5. And really, if you know the initial value is 5, you didn't have to do any of the figuring because there is only one that showed the initial value of 5. So in our next example, we're shown uh, a graph and it says it's showing the cost versus the number. And the question is, which of the following describes a difference between lines one and two? So the first statement says line two has a larger initial cost. Well, no, the initial cost for both line one and two is 200. So that is false. Line one has a larger initial cost. Well, if line two doesn't, then line one can't either. Um, line two has a greater rate of change. That is incorrect because line two is less steep than line one. So the only answer that can be correct is D. Line one has the greater rate of change.